Yuffie lied about their storage being local. Ring happily hands footage over to the cops, even from the camera in your bedroom. And even the low-cost Wise has slowly been locking more and more features behind a monthly paywall. All I use this for is for checking my 3D prints. But I still want CCTV, so what do I do? How about the first two words in that initialism? Closed circuit television. None of the smart cameras you can buy are closed circuit, which is what makes them so convenient and also so awful. As we've seen, even if the company denies it, your cameras are still connected to a server outside your house and you don't control that server. Simple as that. Now I used to work sales. Specifically, I worked for a large European distributor and led the CCTV department in the UK. I worked on some very cool stuff, but almost all of it was NDA'd for obvious reasons and I can't talk about it. Although, those NDAs don't mean I can't give you advice on what you can do to host your own CCTV server using the same software the big companies use for free. Well, the software is free, you still gotta pay for the cameras. Obviously, this is a lot more complex and expensive than just buying a cheap Wise Wi-Fi camera and putting it somewhere. But hey, you wanted actual, real privacy, right? Let's start with the cameras themselves. This is a Hikvision dome. Hikvision is a Chinese company with kind of a stranglehold on the industry, and you can always tell Hikvision footage from its distinctive OSD on-screen display. These will run you about a hundred bucks each. Pretty competitive compared to most smart cameras. Obviously Wise undercuts them, but they undercut everyone. And the advantage of a dome is that it is much more durable than basically any smart camera. You can see they have a tail with two connectors on the end. One is for network and the other is for powering it with 12 volt. But we're going to make the power connector obsolete by using PoE or power over ethernet. That means pushing about 15 watts down a normal ethernet cable to power what's on the end. To do this, I have a basic cheap PoE switch. In this case, an eight port 10100 switch with a single non-PoE uplink. This switch ran me about 50 bucks, but if you don't need eight ports, you can get ones that are cheaper. Normal ethernet has a range of about 100 meters. So it's unlikely you'll need to use an extender in a normal house. Maybe if you wanted one of these cameras watching a gate on the far side of your property, that would be a problem. But I think that's beyond the scope of this video. These cameras come with a mounting kit. What you normally do with a dome camera is take the lid off with a torque security bit, line up where you want to put it, drill some holes, and screw it down. Of course, you usually want to keep the cable tucked away behind it. So when you're running your Cat5, try to aim for it to come out directly behind where you want your cameras to be for the neatest possible job. To control everything, I'm going to use this B-Link SER5. It's a mini PC I bought on Amazon for about 300 bucks. It sports a Ryzen 5600H, 16 gigs of RAM, and a very small chassis. Perfect for hiding in a cupboard somewhere. It also supports a two and a half inch drive internally. But if you want more storage, you can use an external USB 3 hard drive. On that mini PC, I'm going to install Milestone X-Protect Express. This is the free version of the NVR software that I installed in schools, airports, and hotels. I sold hundreds of X-Protect licenses to large businesses all over the UK. Lucky for us, the free version supports up to eight cameras and basic recording and playback functions. And honestly, that's all you really need. I don't think my 1,000 square foot house needs more than eight cameras, do you? In this demo setup, all I've done is connect the ethernet port of the PC to the uplink port on the switch, then one of the cameras to a PoE port. We then need to go into the network settings on the PC and set an IP for the ethernet connection on the same subnet as the cameras. I'm going to use 192.168.1.1. It's important to do the cameras one at a time because they have a default IP and if we connect both at once, they'll conflict. For Hikvision, the default IP is normally 192.168.1.64. So if we open up a browser on the PC and type that address in, there we go. It will prompt you to change your password as soon as you connect. Some cameras also ask for recovery questions, so make sure you give memorable answers. It is absolutely vital that you change the password on these cameras. I have walked into buildings, connected to their Wi-Fi on my phone, searched the network for vision devices, and then logged on to get a live view in like a minute. Doing that in front of a potential customer is a really great way to sell managed switches and firewalls. To get a live view image in the browser, you will have to install the plugin and reload the page in either Internet Explorer or 
IE mode in Edge, which you don't have to do if you're not comfortable with a random EXE file from China. You don't need this for ExpoTech, so it's totally skippable. Also note that the image is upside down because these domes are meant to be installed on the ceiling. You can change that in software. Even without the plugin, you can change that all important admin password, set the date and time, move the OSD around, and crucially, set a static IP. Note down which IP you use for which camera to stay organized and to make the next step easier. I'm going to use 1.101 for the front door and 1.102 for the back door. Repeat the process for the rest of your cameras, then go to the Milestone website to download XProtect Express. I gave them some extremely legitimate details and then trained some self-driving cars, but did eventually get the download. Install XProtect, then open it up to begin the server setup. You will need an internet connection to install it, since it automatically downloads a basic license. When you get to the hardware scan setup, you will need to include the credentials you created, and then the cameras will show up. You can identify them with their IP addresses, according to the list you made earlier. If you get an error, or they don't show up, you can add new hardware by opening the management client, going to recording servers, and then right-clicking and selecting add hardware. One of my cameras really didn't want to be added. I actually managed to lock the account. No matter, I used the security questions to change the password to something else, and then adding it worked perfectly. Once they're added, you'll have to create a group and add them there too. You could do indoors and outdoors. That's what I'm going to go for, even though my cameras are a foot apart and named front door and back door. Now it's all added, that's basically it. I would recommend you turn down the recording resolution and frame rate to extend recording time, but that is entirely up to you, of course. This is your server. XProtect is set up to record on motion by default. Three seconds before, three seconds after. To tweak the camera sensitivity, open up the management client, then click on cameras under devices, then motion. Here, you can exclude areas of the image that may constantly have motion, swaying trees or cars on a road, for example. The green outline shows the motion when it's being picked up, and the red bar on the top right shows when it crushes the threshold to record. To change the length of time it records for, click on the record tab at the bottom. I'm going to change it to five seconds of buffer instead of three. To actually watch live and recorded footage, we need to open up the smart client. Create a view and then drag your cameras over to it. To watch a recording, flip the switch at the bottom to playback and then drag the timeline back to where footage was recorded, shown in red. Exporting is equally as easy. Click on exports at the top, then add which cameras you want footage from. I generally use the media player format because I only have a couple of cameras and I'm comfortable working with raw video files. It exports AVI or MKV video files. If you have a lot of cameras, it makes more sense to use the XProtect format because it presents the footage in a neat, synchronized way. Good for tracking a subject through multiple camera feeds. Maybe someday I'll uncover the identity of whoever keeps messing with my ice cream crocodile guy. What you're about to see may disturb you. Once this is all set up, we're going to disable the Wi-Fi in Device Manager. And if you want to go really hard, physically remove the chip from the computer. Since the PoE switch isn't connected to the internet, the only way to interact with this PC is now a mouse, keyboard, and monitor. Remember to keep this server hidden and under lock and key. If you've played Hitman, you know how letting intruders access your CCTV usually goes. XProtect supports remote monitoring, of course, but specifically to spite cloud-based cameras, I'm building this system to be totally offline, or air-gapped. After all, your cameras can't be used in a botnet, and your footage can't automatically be given to the cops, or watched in VLC by strangers, if nothing in your setup has internet access. Stay safe, and I'll see you next time.